I'm Robin Franklin. I'm the Professor of Stem Cell Medicine at the Cambridge uh, Stem Cell Institute. And my lab is based at the clinical school, the Addenbrooke site. And I've been a fellow of Pembroke since 1995. Uh, so I'm a biologist and my particular interest is in how tissues regenerate. Uh, this has always struck me as one of the remarkable, one of the many remarkable things about biology. And I don't think there's any other uh, thing in the universe that regenerates in the way that living organisms are able to. Uh, I'm also interested in the central nervous system, the, the brain and the spinal cord, which to my mind is without doubt the most fascinating of all the organs. Uh, and so there's an interesting convergence here between interest in regeneration biology and interest in the central nervous system in that the central nervous system is traditionally thought of as an organ or tissue that has a very poor capacity to regenerate itself. Now that is certainly true for one component of the central nervous system, the nerve cells or neurons, and once they're lost they're gone forever. But it's not true of another important cellular constituent of the central nervous system which rejoices in the name of the oligodendrocyte. And this is the cell that makes the myelin sheaths that wrap around the nerve fibers and enable nerve fibers to conduct electrical impulses very efficiently. Now, the oligodendrocyte is the primary target in a common neurological disease, in fact, the commonest neurological disease of young adults called multiple sclerosis. So when uh, the disease process targets the oligodendrocytes, they get killed and the myelin comes off the nerve fibers. And of course, that has consequences for the ability of the central nervous system to function properly. Now, in contrast to loss of neurons that aren't replaced, oligodendrocytes are very efficiently replaced from a population of adult brain stem cells. Uh, and it's that process which uh, my lab has studied for some 20 years or so now. So how do the brain stem cells, which are very abundant in the adult brain, including the adult human brain, how do those stem cells register that something's gone wrong, and how do they make new oligodendrocytes? Uh, so, uh, it, it, that is pretty much what everybody in my lab works on. So there's about 20 or so people in the lab, half of them postdocs, half of them PhD students and technicians and the ministry staff. Uh, and although uh, at one level the problem is very simple, how does a brain stem cell become an oligodendrocyte? Of course, the details, the mechanics of how that happens is highly complicated. So everybody in the lab works on different aspects of it. Some people work on the signals in the damaged central nervous system which tell a stem cell to become an oligodendrocyte. Some of the people in the lab work on the mechanisms within the stem cell that enable it to become an oligodendrocyte. And then there's a, another aspect which we study quite intensively is how that whole process changes with aging. So, so, so all regenerative processes become less efficient as you get older, which in a sense is one of the reasons we get older because we don't regenerate our tissues quite so well. And for a disease like MS, which is a many decades duration, of course this aging effect on the uh, ability to regenerate oligodendrocytes is highly relevant. So, so our, our philosophy is that if you really understand the detailed biology of how that process works, then that opens up opportunities for others to develop drugs which will uh, potentially make brain stem cells, make new oligodendrocytes more efficiently, particularly in situations where it's failing. And so there, there's a real prospect that, that you can use this information to develop, to develop regenerative medicines that will that, help in the treatment of uh, a complex and, and uh, disease such as multiple sclerosis. Um, so there's a great tendency that, that, that you know, we become very um, myopic and, and claustrophobic in our own niche environments and, and, and don't talk sufficiently to people in, in diverse and different disciplines. And of course, Pembroke has, has given me the opportunity to talk to academics across the whole spectrum of, of, of subjects. Uh, uh, and you know, I, I've made very, many very good friends amongst the fellowship in Pembroke. Um, so so uh, you know, being a fellow of Pembroke is something which, um, of which I'm immensely proud, and, and no doubt it's been one of the most uh, enriching aspects of, of my career.